know, I thought I asked you to set the table. I didn't know how many to set it for. Same old crowd, you, me, and the girls. I thought I'd wait and see if any guests checked in. There's no sense in setting the table and having to add more plates. <laughs> well, if you're waiting for guests, you might not set it for three weeks. So, would you please get the plates and the silverware? Where are they? The same place they've been for the last 20 years, in the cupboard. I thought you might have moved them. No, I didn't move them. It's Betty's job to set the table. She's playing baseball. The Hooterville Hawks are having a double header today. Well, it ain't right. Everybody's got a job around here. Betty's job is setting the table. Bobby's job is clearing it. Billy's job is drying the dishes. Your job is... Just trying to find out what your job is. I manage the hotel and set the policy. Well, you've done enough policy setting for one day. Now, would you please set the table? <laughs> oh, hi, Betty Jo. Hello, Mother. Uncle Joseph. Now, uh, how'd the game go? Game? Did you win? Win what? Well, wasn't there a doubleheader with the Pixie Pirates today? I didn't play. Fellers wouldn't let you play? Let her? She's hitting 417, fielding 822, and she stole 34 bases. <laughs> Mother, you might as well face it. I've hung up my glove. Well, I'm glad to hear that. You know, it's been a long while since you hung up anything. <laughs> I've finally discovered that there are more important things in life than playing shortstop with the Hooterville Hawks. They gonna play in the outfield? I'm through with baseball forever. I've decided to devote my life to science. Well, that's nice. Would you like a glass of milk, milk and a cookie? Did you hear what I said? Hey, how'd the game go today, infant? I'm not an infant. And I didn't play. Well, gee, that's not gonna do your batting average any good. I'm not interested in baseball. Do you mean to tell me you're gonna take Mickey Mantle's picture out of your locket? <laughs> Doesn't anybody understand? Adolescence. Ugh. May I please have the sliced tomatoes, Bajo? Thanks. Now you pass the corn. <laughs> Betty Jo. Betty Jo. Oh, here you are, Mom. Thank you, but I didn't want the spare ribs. I wanted to ask you something. When you go to the library, do you eat? No, ma'am. Well, then, when you're eating, don't read. Oh, but it's such an interesting book. Life of Madam Curry. What's so interesting about reading a cooking book? <laughs> it's not a cookbook. It's about Madame Curie. She discovered radium. I just discovered something. I got four knives. Who set the table? <laughs> Uncle Joe, any complaints? Tell him. Oh, I'm not complaining. I got four forks, too. <laughs> Ma, may I be excused? You haven't eaten. I want to finish this book so I can write a report on it. Well, you did a science report two weeks ago. Well, this is a special report for extra credit. Well, that's the first time you've done any extra work for Mr. Grimes. How is old Grim Grimes? <laughs> now, Billy Joe. Well, that's what we used to call him. Mr. Grimes is retired. Oh, who's taking his place? Mr. Barrett. <laughs> oh, Mom. He's the most handsome, wonderful, interesting, delightful. Oh, to me, I've heard those words before. When? From Billy Cho. When she had the most handsome, wonderful, interesting, delightful art teacher. <laughs> At least you had a crush on him. Now, that was just schoolgirl stuff. <laughs> well, if you think I have a crush on Roland. Roland? <laughs> That's his first name. Uh. <sighs> Roland. Oh, Mom, you have no idea. Science is just. Fascinating. So was the art teacher. <laughs> but I'm glad to see that you're finally getting interested in something. What was that? She eats better than I do. Where'd you get this? Probably bought himself a side of beef. I don't think this is a beef bone. Well, what difference does it make? A lot of difference. This might have some scientific significance. <laughs> uh, well, there's one way of finding out. Uh, tomorrow, why don't you ask Mr. Barrett about it? Mom, 
that's a great idea. Thanks. But I'm sure you would have thought of it. <laughs> Obviously, it's not a beef bone. Obviously. It looks like it might belong to a prehistoric animal. This could be very important. Could be the most important thing that ever happened to me. Uh, yes, Miss Bradley. Oh, Betty Jo. Miss Betty Jo. Uh, when did you discover this? When Mr. Grimes retired. <laughs> I mean, the dog found it. Where? Oh, I, I don't know. He's always bringing home old bones. Do you think he could show me where he found it? Well, no, sir. He could show me, and, and then I could show you. That is, if you were along. Oh. I have an idea. How would you like to come to the hotel for supper tonight? And then we can talk to the dog and my family. That would be very nice. What time? 4.30. Isn't that a little early? Not for me. How about 6? I'll be there. <laughs> I set the table for you last night. But I've got to change my dress. What's wrong with the one you're wearing? Mr. Barrett saw me in this dress today. Okay, I'll set it for you. Thanks. Oh, by the way, Mom, will you make the chicken good tonight? What? Oh, well, not that it isn't always good, but I mean extra good. Betty Jo, this is not the first time I've cooked a meal for the school teachers that you girls get crushes on. I've cooked for Bobby Joe's history teacher, Billy Joe's art teacher, and I think I can cook for science teacher. <laughs> Mom, I know he's gonna like you. Well, I'll do my very, very best to make him proud of me. I'm proud of you. And I'd be proud of you, too, Uncle Joe, if you wear a collar and tie. No, thanks. But, Uncle Joe, you've got to. It's very important. He will. I didn't wear a collar and tie for the coach of the Hooterville Hawks. <laughs> Where's the dog? I don't know. Well, doesn't he realize how important this is? Mr. Barrett's coming to see him. And why doesn't he wear the collar and tie? Won't anybody cooperate with me? you're made up for. Mr. Barrett. Oh, well, in that case, may I make a few suggestions? Of course. <laughs> Wash your face, take down your hair, and put on your brown dress. Oh, Mom, that's so schoolgirlish. That's what you are, so wash your face and change your dress. <laughs> Gosh, how would you like to look like a high school kid? I'd love it. <laughs> I'm uh, Roland Barrett. Oh. Oh! Oh, I'm Billy Joe. I, I'm Betty Joe's older sister. I'm glad to know you. Uh, is uh, Betty Joe home? Uh, yes. She's probably polishing her saddle shoes or something. <laughs> Just sit down. Thank you. I don't go to Hooterville High School anymore. I didn't think you did. I haven't seen you around. No, as a matter of fact, I graduated ages ago. I'm halfway through business school. Oh, planning a career in the business world? Until Mr. Wright comes along. Mr. Wright? That certain somebody. You think, um, Betty Joe will be down soon? You're darn right I'll be down soon. <laughs> Still? Mom, she's trying to get her hooks into him. She's just entertaining Mr. Barrett. Entertaining? She's putting on a whole floor show. And I know just what's going to happen next. Don't you think a woman should marry a man who's her intellectual superior? Don't you think a woman should marry a man who's her intellectual superior? Well, uh, I, I suppose it's a matter of chemistry. 
When the two right people meet, it's like a big explosion. Explosion? I'll show her an explosion. Wait till I get my hands on her pow. Oh, Mom, why can't Billy get her own boyfriend? Honey, he is not your boyfriend. He came to see the dog. That's just an excuse. He really wanted to come to see me. <laughs> Mom, you just don't understand. Now, listen to me. A long time ago, I felt just like you do about my history teacher, Henry Roynish. I loved him all the way from the Boston Tea Party to the Spanish-American War. <laughs> just when Teddy Roosevelt was halfway up San Juan Hill, he eloped with the gym teacher. Mom! Oh, well, go, go, you're fixed, go. himself. Do you have the other bone? Yes. I put it right over here. Check it. What'd you do with the bone? <laughs> they look just alike, except that one's bigger. Yes, but I do think they came from the same animal. But what kind of animal? Could they be from one of them diamond sores? Years ago, they laid fossils all around here. I don't think it came from one of them diamond... Uh, those dinosaurs. It might be a member of the Brontosaurus family. I wish I had someone to talk to about this. Well, uh, there's, a, there's a museum up in Pixley. Well, I tried them, but they closed for a while for repairs. Maybe if the dog brought home more, we could put them together and find out what kind of animal it was. I'll talk to him. Look, stupid. You've been dragging home strange bones. Where are they coming from? There's your answer. Where'd you get the bone? Well, show us. Who wants us? Come on, Come on. You sure are the bearingest dog. It looks like the last day of the Hooterville rummage sale. Where did you hide the bone? Well, here we go again. Wonder what the train's coming for. Charlie and Floyd promised to pick me up. Oh, well, we didn't find the bones. It's getting pretty late. Well, uh, tomorrow's Saturday. We could spend the whole day looking. Uh, Mr. Barrett, well, why don't you come to lunch tomorrow? I was going to ask him that. Well, I hate to impose. Oh, you're not imposing. All right, what time? 9.30. <laughs> B-O-A-N. Now try Brontosaurus. <laughs> oh, well, let me try talking to him once. All right, now I'm going to give you one more chance. Where are the bones? That's a new place. <laughs> At last. Well, come on. Where are you going? Under the porch. You'll never make it. You want to play more baseball? <laughs> Uncle Joe, would you get me a flashlight? Show me, boy. Show me. I'll show you where them bones are. I'm following him. I found the place. Ask her where, Uncle Joe. Where? Under the lobby. There's not enough room. I can't crawl any farther. The space is about this big. There's just enough room for the dog to get through. 
From the looks of these, I'd say there was a whole brontosaurus skeleton under the hotel, Mrs. Bradley. Well, that's better than termites. <laughs> Mom, how can you take this so calmly? How else can I take it? Mom, we gotta get it out of there. Why? In the interest of science. <laughs> well, frankly, I'm not that interested in science. <laughs> Mrs. Bradley, you can't ignore a thing like this. Of course you can't. What do you think will happen when word gets around that you're living over a brontosaurus graveyard? <laughs> Scientists will flock here from all over the world to take a look at 50 cents a peak. Just how are they gonna see it? Simple. We cut a hole in the middle of the lobby for them to look through. Anybody want some pie and coffee? Hey, there's a fortune under this hotel. That's my luck. And I've been trying to make a fortune over it. <laughs> Mrs. Bradley, I'm not interested in the commercial possibilities of this discovery. I am. But a discovery like this is of major scientific importance. If you would only allow us to dig down through the lobby. Which I won't. But, Mrs. Bradley... Look, I can't let you tear up my hotel just because the dog put a few bones under it. Look! Mrs. Bradley, do you know what you're looking at? Yeah, a great big hole in the middle of my lobby. <laughs> the way it was. See, we've got each piece numbered. Suppose it rubs off. It can't. <laughs> well, don't worry, Mom. We know where it goes. On the floor. <laughs> Shouldn't the dog be carrying that and you be carrying the big piece? Well, I wanted to, but he talked me out of it. Down. Why don't you grab a shovel and help? If I grab a shovel, it won't be to help. <laughs> I'd like a room. Single or double? Single. Oh, well, let's see now. Uh, um... <laughs> Would you like number four? <laughs> if you don't mind, I'd rather have an inside room. An inside room? Well, I could give you number seven, but you'll have to climb in the window with a ladder. We're uh, digging up the lobby. Something wrong? Well, we're, we're looking for a brontosaurus. A brontosaurus? I'll see you next no. trip. <laughs> well, that's the third guest that checked out before checking in. Why did you have to block the stairway? Wait till we find the rest of them bones. It'd be a solid line from here to the train. Going in what direction? <laughs>
Carl found another one. Well, let me see. Oh, yeah. Hey, where'd you get that? <laughs> you must have been digging while we were asleep. Come on. <laughs> This is Clarence McGill, curator of the Pixley Museum. I would like to report a missing baby brontosaurus. Bront... B-R-O. I just got back from my vacation and I came in here and I... Just a second, Sheriff. Never mind, Sheriff. I think I just got a line on the thief. Yeah, boy. Yeah, boy. Yeah, boy. Come back! Come back! Madam, that dog has stolen my baby brontosaurus, bone by bone. From where? The Pixie Museum. I am the curator. Oh, just a minute. for you in just a minute. Would you like them in a doggy bag? <laughs> what am I going to do with these? What are they? Thermometers. I bought a hundred of them. What for? I was going to paste them on spare rib bones and sell them to the scientists of prehistoric souvenirs. <laughs> well, maybe you can make a deal with the Pixley Museum. Mom, have you seen my baseball mitt? Baseball mitt? I thought you'd given that up for science. Science? Why does everybody think I'm interested in science? Well, it's just a silly idea. Did you think you could get Mr. Barrett interested in buying some thermometers to see how hot it is in his classroom? I'll ask him when I see him. He won't be in school for a couple of weeks. Where is he? He eloped with the gym teacher. Oh, don't they always? Here you are. Thanks. Wait him out. Don't take any bad pitches. <laughs> to the museum again? Where'd you get that? Ah! Never mind. I don't want to know. Junction. This has been a Filmways presentation.